Hi there, and welcome to one of my video tutorials. My name is Ian Middleton. I am a travel and landscape photographer, and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Ian Middleton Photography or on my website, ianmiddletonphotography.com. Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to look again at exposing to the right and how to edit a photo that is exposed to the right. If you haven't seen my first tutorial on this, then please check it out. I'll put a link to it up here now. But in this video, I'm going to show you again with another photo, but I'm also going to look here at uh, how far we can expose to the right before we start to lose the detail to the point where it's unrecoverable. And what I mean by that is basically uh, burning out your highlights, blowing them out, so to speak. Now, you'll be surprised at how far you can push your exposure uh, before it actually, you start to lose the detail or the detail becomes unrecoverable. Okay, so if we take a look at this photo here, um, if we look at the sky, to all intents and purposes, it looks totally blown out. Yeah, th there's actually no detail there whatsoever. But you'll be surprised. Now one way to check how much of your scene is blown out is, first of all, if you do it in camera, you can turn on the blinkies feature. Or here in Adobe Camera Raw, if you open the picture here, you can go up to your histogram here. And here on the right uh, top right corner here, you have the highlight clipping warning. If we click this, then it highlights the areas in red that are blown. So as you can see by this picture, actually not much of, uh, of the scene is blown out at all. Which means, as we can see, if we uh, pull down the exposure, you'll see that we can recover all of that sky. There we go. See? No more highlight clipping warning and the sky has been totally recovered. Let's take another scene now. Now in this scene here, the sky is totally different. There is actually uh, a lot more cloud detail and larger areas that are very bright compared to areas that are not so bright. So you can see here again in this picture, the whole sky is almost a completely blank canvas. Again, up here, let's click our highlight clipping warning. And now we can see that there are much larger chunks of the sky, which are totally blown out. And in this case, you'll find that uh, it, it is unrecoverable. So let's turn this off. Now let's pull this exposure back now. Okay, so now I've pulled it back minus three stops. Now we've lost the detail here, but you can see here there are two big spikes. And those two big spikes are for these areas here. Basically what's it, what uh, Photoshop or Adobe Camera Raw has done is it's just greyed out these areas. Areas that were large chunks of white canvas have just been turned grey. But it looks ugly. If we zoom in, yeah, doesn't look nice at all. Look, see? They're basically just greyed out parts, but it's completely blown. There's no detail. And it looks ugly. So in this scene, we pushed it too far. And uh, because of the nature of the sky, it was uh, unrecoverable. So, you know, how far you can push your exposure very much depends on your scene. In a scene like this first one, this was actually a very hazy, misty scene. And the sky 
really wasn't filled with too many super bright areas and the clouds were not really thick chunky contrasty clouds they were nice wispy like nice wisps of clouds so to speak so you could I could see by from a scene like this that I could push it much further to the right than a scene like the previous one but when you're out in the field shooting photos like this with a view to exposing to the right the best thing to really do just to be sure is to bracket your exposures so take three photos and that will mean that if the photo that you've exposed or overexposed as much as possible has been pushed to the point where it's unrecoverable or details in the sky or other parts of the scene are unrecoverable then you've still got uh, one of the other exposures to work with so in this scene this was my nominal exposure so you can see that uh, in this exposure I pushed the histogram right up to the edge but I didn't push it off the edge that was my first exposure I then took a second exposure that was underexposed by one stop. This centralized the histogram and ensured that all of my detail was there, just in case. And then I took an exposure that was overexposed by one stop. And in this one, I pushed it off the edge. But as I showed you, the detail is still recoverable. So that means that I'm going to work with this photo because it's my brightest picture and it also means that the, the mist down here is nice and bright too. Whereas in the first one, the mist here is it's, it's not so bright, it's a little bit kind of dirty brown, it's not so nice. Whereas this one, it's much brighter. So I'm going to work with uh, this picture. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the advantages of shooting like this. Now you may look at this picture and think, oh my god, it's ugly. Oh, this is no good. But this is just the starting point. That's the whole point of exposing to the right. Yeah, the initial picture you take is, is not going to look good. We need to do some editing on it. But you're going to see that by exposing to the right and then editing the photo you end up with a much more vibrant punchy image with glossier shadows glossier blacks and also what happens is when you expose to the right more of the detail is actually on the right side of the histogram and when you expose to the right the tonal transitions transitions between colors are much smoother as a result and also when you darken your shadows you get much uh, more like silkier smoother shadows smoother blacks actually if we look at this photo that was underexposed well not technically not actually underexposed even because uh, this was exposed um, correctly really centralized the histogram but you can see that it's all kind of murky shadows down here. They're not so nice. But you're going to see now that when I work with this uh, image that is exposed to the right, all of the shadows down here are going to look much more vibrant. OK, so let's go. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do with this photo is deal with this area here. Now, because I've exposed to the right, uh, and also there's really not a lot of really deep dark shadows in this scene this area here is blank and it's blank because basically there is no information here so the first thing I can do is go down to my black slider and slide this across until the histogram reaches the very left side of the graph There we go. Already you can see a huge difference.
Now, the next step is to look at the sky. And for that, I'm going to use this graduated filter tool. So I'll select the tool and then I'll select my area. Ooh, there we go. Okay, this is the area of graduation. So anything above this will be completely changed. Anything between the green and the red will be changed on a gradual basis. And anything below the red will be untouched. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, reduce my exposure in the sky. As we can see, minus one stop has brought back all the details and there's no more uh, overexposed areas. There's no highlight clipping warning. But I'm also going to bring back the highlights to bring back some more detail there. I take down my highlights. There we go. I might even bring this down a touch more to really darken that sky. That's nice. Now in this area here I can do so much more too. I can even boost the contrast a bit. I can even use the dehaze tool because it's a hazy scene so if I uh, take the dehaze up if I take the dehaze up by plus 10 uh, already we're making a huge difference. So I'm going to go back to my main menu now. Now up here the profile I usually try either Adobe Vivid or Adobe Color. Now in this scene and in this type of photo Adobe Vivid is really working well. So now with just that adjustment look Look at the difference already. Before. After. Already with just those uh, few adjustments we've made a massive difference to the scene. I can here adjust any adjustments I make here now will adjust the overall uh, scene itself. So I can tweak up the overall contrast here. I can play with the shadow, the highlights a bit. Just a teeny touch. Vibrance. Let's take up vibrance just a touch. I've got my dehaze tool again here. Again this will affect the overall scene. I think just a touch here down here for for the mist down the bottom but I don't I don't want to do too much here clarity I don't need clarity here but it's an option now the texture tool is going to be useful for the church itself so if I zoom in here we can adjust the texture tool which will have an effect on the facade of the church and other buildings So by taking that up, just a touch, you can see. I'll take it down. It made a slight difference to the church facade. And there you go. That's about it. So again, let's look before and after. Now let's compare that to the exposure that was taken for minus one which was exposed to centralize the histogram against our image that was exposed to the right and then edited. Now you can see I have a good spread of uh, colors and detail across the whole histogram. We've got lots of shadow 
detail area, lots of mid-tones and lots of nice highlights. Now this is still, there's still a bit of a gap here, so I can maybe try to adjust the whites. just to pull that up okay so there you go okay I'm gonna now open this into Photoshop okay and in Photoshop I usually add a few little finishing touches. I go again to the Highlights tool in Photoshop because it gives you much more flexibility. Uh, make sure you've got Show More Options checked and this way then I can again add a touch more detail back into the sky there. You can see And using my curves tool, if I want a bit more overall contrast, I can just a tweak. I don't want to overdo it. Just a tweak. There we go. And there it is, my finished photo. So there you go, another great example of using the technique called exposing to the right. Now remember as I said you'll be surprised how far you can push your exposure to the right before the detail becomes unrecoverable and it also very much depends on the scene that you're shooting and in particular the skies. Watch out for the skies because if there's a lot of bright uh, detail in the sky uh, a lot of contrast between the bright areas and the dark areas, especially with, with clouds, as you saw. There's a chance that you may get large chunks of area which are blown and unrecoverable. So as I said, use in camera, you can use your blinkies. But the best thing really with any scene that you're shooting, and particularly with a scene that you're not sure about, then bracket your exposures. Make sure you get three. Make sure you get an underexposed one that also contains all of the details so you can use that if you find that your overexposed image is unrecoverable or at least the nominal one. Okay, so thanks for watching. I uh, hope you found this useful and uh, check out my other tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and uh, feel free to make a comment let me know if you've used this technique yourself and how you get on or if there's any other techniques that you're um, familiar with okay so thanks a lot catch you later bye mm -hmm.